What is up guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day, which might know me as Day Cyberbox. I'm a cybersecurity professional and college student. In today's video, we're going to be analyzing a packet capture from cyberdefenders.org. Cyberdefenders.org is a training platform that is specifically focused on the defensive side of cybersecurity and it aims to provide a place for blue teams to practice, validate the skills they have and acquire the ones they need. And we're specifically gonna be analyzing the packet capture uh, that was the PCAP one. Um, and as you can see here, there is um, sev there's several uh, labs that you can use to learn about different things um, way beyond packet captures. So definitely check it out. Uh, there's tons of things to learn. So we're, we're specifically gonna be analyzing uh, malware traffic analysis one, which is this one. Um, and it's uh, by Brad Duncan. Um, Brad Duncan is the um, author or the owner of the blog, uh, malwaretrafficanalysis.net. And I've actually analyzed some packet captures from his website. So definitely check out his um, his website, malwaretrafficanalysis.net for more packet captures. So um, this is uh, what we're gonna be analyzing. I already have the, 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 the packet capture downloaded um, and um, we're gonna be simply um, and, um, answering the questions provided uh, based on what we're required to find in the packet capture. Um, and now with the last couple of videos, I went over a series called Deep Dive into Wireshark for Security Analysis. And in 10 videos, I covered the basic things you need to know for analyzing packet captures um, as a new security analyst or just for the basics of learning how to analyze with Wireshark. So if you're new to it, definitely check out those videos to learn more about how to use Wireshark and you know get more familiarized with it. So uh, because I'm gonna be using um, the knowledge I dropped in those videos and applying them in this packet capture. So definitely check those videos out. Um, with that said, let's just, let's just dive right into this, uh, today's video and please be sure to like the video. And if you've never subscribed, please be sure to subscribe. Um, everyone who subscribed, thank you to everyone. Uh, I truly appreciate you guys. So let's just get started. Now, what is the IP address of the Windows VM that gets infected? Now, so I already started uh, answering these questions and I figured I, I might as well just um, make a video while I was um, going through it. So what is the IP address of the Windows VM that gets infected? Um, so if you're trying to find a Windows device in a, uh, in a packet capture, you usually want to use um, NetBIOS name service um, um, and we, its filter is MBNS. So this is a Windows or a protocol that you can, we can use to find uh, Windows, pack, uh, Windows uh, devices in a packet capture. So as you can see here, we have, um, we majorly have like just one single IP address here as the source IP address and it's all um, mapped to the same host, which is these um, uh, K34EN6W3NPC. So that is the IP address that we need. Um, actually, yeah, so that's the IP address that we're looking for, this particular IP address and this is the device that it belongs to. Um, and I'm pretty sure that is the um, IP address of the Windows VM that gets affected because that is the only Windows VM that we can see in this packet capture based on our MBNS filter. Second question is, what is the host name of the Windows VM that gets infected? And we already have that right here, which is these K34EN6W3NPC. Third question, what is the MAC address of, this, of the infected VM? Uh, we can find that in the Ethernet header. So right here um, is the MAC address. So the source is the MAC address for the Windows VM. Um, and then what is the IP address of the compromised website? So uh, we know that the user visited a compromised website. So we want to first of all filter for HTTP, um, which is going to show us all of the web traffic um, from the, you know, from the user and essentially all of the web traffic in the packet capture. However, since we already know the infected uh, host and we know the IP address, we might as well just filter for every packet, every web traffic packet that also has that particular IP address, whether it is the source or destination. So that will be and IP, IP ADDDR equals 172.1.16.165.165. All right, awesome. So we can see a ton of hosts here or essentially the you know, the websites that the user visited. Um, and another way we can look at these um, websites that the user visited is to go to statistics and to look at HTTP requests. And we can see all of the HTTP requests from the user's device. So 
if we close all of this down, we can look at essentially a summary of all the websites the user visited. So they visited all of these websites. So we kind of see there's not that many of them. Um, that way we can necessarily we can easily narrow down what is legitimate and what is uh, malicious. So we already know uh, Bing and YouTube, you know, they're pretty trusted. So we can kind of cross those out. So we're essentially looking at Sydney Holland, um, Stand, Adult Biz, and 24 Corp Shop. So let's close that. Uh, let's take a quick look at Sydney Holland. Um, Sydney Holland, uh, if we look at the HTTP data, this is the HTTP header, um, just basic HTTP header stuff. And it was the user visited um, Sydney Holland from Bing. So the referrer was Bing. That means the website where um, uh, this URL came from is from Bing. So maybe they were doing a Google search or, or a Bing search. Um, and then Bing redirected them to sydneyholland.nl. All right. So um, we also have um, adultbiz.nl, uh, the IN. And adultbiz.in was from, was referred from sydneyholland.nl. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, what else do we have? We have more Sydney Holland NL. Um, we have 24 Corp Shop. 24 Corp Shop was referred by Sydney Holland again. So that's we're seeing a, a pattern there. And stand trust stand and stand still let's just call it stand. Uh, stand was referred by uh 24 Corp Shops. And 24 Corp Shop was you know referred by Sydney Holland. So we seen a pattern in there. City Holland is kind of at the center of everything. So let's kind of look at you know the HTML code for City Holland because um this is HTTP data, so it's not encrypted. So we can if we go through the TCP stream or HTTP stream, we can essentially look at the HTML code and kind of see how the website looked like um, when the user visited the website. And as a matter of fact, we can actually copy the HTML code and put it in the um, index.html file and just you know actually load it up. Um, in our browser and look at it, but we're not going to be doing that in this video. So, um, just simply looking at the HTML code, we see it's like a normal website. Um, we see there's some JavaScript, so that means like there are like some dynamic stuff going on in the website as well. Um, there's some URLs as well. Okay, what we're essentially looking for is embedded scripts. So right here we have this first iteration of a script where we see a uh, a redirect to HTTP um, adult.biz. You know, new .j uh, query .php. So it's definitely something that we we're not uh, we wouldn't want to see, right? This is definitely some a malicious indicator because this is embedded and the user might unknowingly click something and just you know redirect them to this particular website or not even. Even without clicking anything, they might be able to just be redirected to that website, which is not uh, going to be good at all. Um, but we've seen that. Uh, so that's definitely something that is concerning, of course. But yeah, I think that's enough information to kind of conclude that that um, that um, website, Sydney Holland, the NL is the compromised website, is the website that originated everything. So let's get back to our HTTP filter. And um, that's essentially um, the uh, compromise, compromise website. And the IP address of the compromise website is this right here, as we can see the destination IP, which is the destination that the user um, navigated to, 82.150.140.30. Next is what is the fully qualified domain name of the compromise website? And we know that is sydneyholland.nl, um, as seen here. Next question is, I'm trying to load the questions up without showing the answers, but I'm not having much success with that. But that's fine. Uh, next question is, what is the IP address of the server that delivered the exploit kit and malware? All right, so we're looking for the server that delivered the exploit kit and malware. Now, we know that this is the compromised website, right? So the compromised website is, you know, the starting point of everything. And then from the compromised website, then we have the server that delivers the exploit kit and malware, right? And that's usually, it's usually redirected to the compromised website, right? So if we look at this, let's let's get back to that filter we had um, and IP ADDR equals 172.16.165.165. So that pretty much filter all the noise if there's any noise at all. So what is the IP address of the server that delivered the exploit kit and malware? So we see 
started from Sydney Holland and from Sydney Holland we went to adultbiz.in now if we're looking for something that is delivering an exploit kit we usually want to look at the HTTP ex export objects um, because that kind of shows us all of the HTTP objects right that we're downloaded or that we're uh, in other words I st defined by Wireshark exported and then um, we're usually looking for applications so we can see different things here there's text there's images um, we see applications and we're our main concern is the application. So let's uh, filter by that and we already see here application Java um, XMS download uh, Shockwave flash and these are really really um, quick ways that you can use to identify um, exploit kits once you start seeing Java you know applications or you're seeing um, um, XMS download um, or you're seeing uh, Shockwave those are some pretty easy ways of um, identifying uh, exploit kits and um you could also see like stuff like um maybe uh flash player which is like you know shockwave uh, shockwave flash you could see a uh, silver light it could also possibly be a pdf so if you're seeing a pdf that's that could possibly be a another way way that an exploit kit uh, can be downloaded so it usually starts from the landing page and then you have the exploit kit and then the, the malware payload is delivered delivered after the exploit is successful all right so um let's cut out all of that ranting and the question is asking what is the ip address of the server that delivered the exploit kit so i'm very very confident that since we have all of these applications coming from this particular domain then this is our you know that's what we're looking at right here and um, that's the 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 domain that's serving the exploit kit um and then the ip address for that is 37.37.200.69.143 which we have here now what is the fully qualified domain name that delivered the exploit kit and malware and we have that name right there as we saw um uh, standard trust probate realty um is the fully qualified domain name of the uh that delivered the exploit kit and malware all right next question is what is the redirect URL that points to the exploit kit landing page, right? What is the redirect URL that points to the exploit kit landing page? Now, this is where the exploit kit was from. We're trying to find the link between the um, the the compromised website and the page that served the exploit kit, right? So the connection between that, what caused that redirect between the uh, compromised website and the landing page and we can see the only website we have here in the middle is 24 corp shop right and that was referred by Sydney Holland and then from Sydney Holland or from 24 corp shop we went the user went to stand tr standard trust probate realty and if we look at the HTTP header we see that standard trust was referred by 24 corp shop so that's our culprit right there and we see our answer is 24 corp shop and i know this is also an answer to another question um however let me just leave it for now and we're going to actually look at that uh, specifically uh now uh number nine other than cv 2013 2551 uh, ie exploit uh another application was targeted by the ek and starts with j provide the full application name so let's kind of just do a quick google search of this cv um and see what it's about uh, let's look at uh, Microsoft, what Microsoft has to say about this exploit. Okay, so this um, thread uses um, Internet Explorer vulnerability to download and run files on your PC, including other malware. Uh, it runs when you visit a hacked or malicious website and you have a vulnerable version of Internet Explorer. All right, so that's a brief summary of that exploit. Um, and yeah, so they said another application was targeted by the EK, right? So if we look at the, and the EK stands for Exploit Kit, by the way. Uh, so if we look at our HTTP uh, export objects right here, and specifically applications, we see Java, XMS download, and Shockwave, right? Um, so uh, we already have a hint, and it says that it starts with J, so it's simply Java. Out of all three applications that we uh, that we're uh, targeted we have um these three and the one only one that starts with j is java so java awesome now how many times was the payload delivered um so we see that um 
if it's the IE, uh, if this is the IE exploit, then uh, I can easily correlate that with XMS download. Um, and um, since it's not Java and it's not Shockwave, it definitely has to be this XMS download um, because it's I, I'm pretty confident it's associated with this um, uh, C, with this uh, CVE. Uh, given that um, the CVE uh, affects some um, Internet Explorer, uh, vulnerable versions of Internet Explorer. So how many times was this payload delivered? And we can see that uh, this XMS download was delivered three times, right? So that's the payload that was delivered. So that's number three. And the compromise website has a malicious script with a URL. What is this URL? So we, if we look back at uh, our culprit, Cine Holland, right here let's follow that to be stream so what is the url as a malicious script so we're looking for scripts right so script if i can spell or type all right there we go so let's find next find next find next find next find next find next until we find the malicious script okay so we have uh adult http colon slash adult base dot in however that is not the format the answer is in we see it there's a dash in there so we're looking for something else entirely um let's see what else it's got to be another script another malicious script in here still more adult base dot in in there find next that's where we started from all over from the top again uh let's look at let's go back to http uh let's look at this let's look at um this one right here and follow tcp stream and we'll filter for script find next I was like, we only have one iteration of that script in there. Okay, so I mean, given the format of the answer, I'm pretty uh, sure it's the um, 24 Corp Shop website um, because that's the only other URL, and the other ones don't have that dash in there. So the compromise website uh, with a malicious script, uh, the compromise website has a malicious script with the URL, and this URL is 24corpshop.com. Now extract the two exploit files. What are the MD5 file hashes? So uh, we can easily extract the exploit files right here and we filter. Um, so let's see, let's spread this out. So since it says two exploit files, not necessarily sure which of these because we have one two three four five six which which of these uh which two out of these is essentially the one that it's looking for so um what i could possibly do is to just uh extract start with this one so save and we'll just put it in downloads and we'll just name it um by one save and if we go here i definitely want to be careful when you're downloading malware to your host this is a um this is definitely oh this is a exploit kit so um actually this is yeah this is the exploit file so definitely want to be careful with downloading that to your host um ls and i just want to do a md5 sum or you can do a sha sha1 or sha 256 sum of the file so i'll just do md5 sum of file one so i can check it in virus total uh, so i can grab that copy and fire up the virus total search for the file all right so it's definitely a player appears to be malicious so this could possibly be one of our files um let's see it's asking for md5 file hashes 
the first one starts with the seven. Second one starts with the one. So I think it says we found the first one, uh, the second one. And so let's see. Let's go back to our packet capture. And actually, I'm looking at this. Um, let me also save this one. And I'll save it as file two. And do the same thing, MD5 sum of file two. All right. Oh, that's the same exact file. I should have known. Um, actually, so let's go back to the packet capture. Yeah, those are those two are the same exact files, and this three are also the same exact file. So let me save this, um, and name it file three, and do an MD five sum of that two. Uh, file three. Oh, typo. MD five sum file three all right that is not our file and the next one we'll analyze we'll find the md5 sum is the shockwave flash file so let's save that and i'll name that file four and do the same thing md5 sum file four all right that was to, like it's our file and we can plug that in virus store and kind of see the detections virus store has for it uh, where you see this is index.php, we can see what the community is saying about it. Um, 28 hits out of 60. And we plug this in here. Oh, actually, it's not the right one. Copy. Second one. So if we paste it here, we can see virus don't open. Okay. Uh, that's what he has as his name. And we can see 34 hits out of 58. Uh, so that's definitely enough to confirm that it's malicious so we can plug those two file hashes now the first one right here copy and we'll paste that in oh actually the first one which says seven so copy and paste that in and the second one that starts with one copy and paste that in as well submit oof see maybe i'm space oh there we go um definitely want to be um you want to be sh uh make sure you're submitting the flags uh the the way it is expected in the uh in 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 the box so that you get the answers right because you might be putting the right answers um but it will not remove the it, will, it wouldn't accept the flag because you're not putting in putting it put it putting it in the right way so that's essentially it for this video uh, this was a pretty fun challenge um i like uh you know looking at the challenge so um if you're looking to learn more about packet analysis definitely check out these challenges and try them on your own uh, that's all for today's video thank you very much for watching um once again if you're looking to learn more about wireshark check out my deep dive into wireshark for security analysis video um for uh free on this channel so definitely check that out it's gonna be right here in this playlist right here so definitely check it out um contains all of the videos you need to learn about wireshark and also be sure to check out um our website uh cyberworksacademy.com for resources to help you in your cybersecurity career as a cybersecurity student or entry-level cybersecurity professional also be sure to check out my personal youtube channel where i post videos uh related to, to my journey as a cybersecurity professional and also consider joining our cybersecurity community um, on Discord. We're very, very close to 900 members at the moment. It's a great place to meet like-minded individuals, to network, collaborate, and also contribute to the progress of the cybersecurity community. It will be great having you on there. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.